Hello, I'm Dinis Demir. All right, so we're here at the uh, museum. It's the black, the black. I'm a butcher. It. It's the Black Museum of Civilization, or African Museum of Civilization. We are here, just arrived. About to check it out. How are you? I've been here before. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Welcome to the Black Civilization Museum. I guess it's your first time here? My third. Oh, okay. So you know your way around here? Great. My name is Khadija. And I'll try to do a little bit of explaining. So this is the first exhibition. Its name is Africa, Cradle of Humanity. And it traces the evolution of mankind from the ancestor of humanity to the homo sapiens, the modern man. In front of you, you have a Baba tree, which is metaphorical for this exhibition because the roots symbolize the birth of the human race on the African continent. The trunk shows the evolution, and the branches are the migrations from Africa to other continents. Mm -hmm. It was made by an artist from Haiti, and his name is Edouard Duval Carré. He named the tree the Humanity Tree. Not all the lakes, but the most important one, and the excavation sites around these lakes. Um, and you'll see that you have much more sites in the eastern and the southern part of Africa because in those regions the soil is very humid. So the more the ground contains water, the more the fossils are able to be conserved. In the western part of Africa, as in Senegal here, for example, we only found rocks because mm. the soil is very acidic and dry. Mm. So you have a higher probability of finding and all the fossils in this region. Mm -hmm. Now, on the next map, we have the migrations. We had two big waves of migration before the birth of the, the modern man, the Homo sapiens sapiens. Mm -hmm. And the first arrow in the red represents the first migration made by the Homo erectus. The Homo erectus first migration red arrow started from southern Africa two million years ago to go to Europe, Asia and Oceania. Here. Now the second migration was made by Homo sapiens archaic, the evolution just before us. They went in blue arrow, of course. Um, they went from uh, northern and eastern Africa to pretty much everywhere. Now why you don't have any arrows on the American part of the world? That's because they just went that way. And by the time they made the whole tour, they were already evolved enough to be Homo sapiens. So America is the most recently populated uh, continent, uh, populated by modern men. This is our family tree. Mm -hmm. um, the family tree of the human race with the other species here. This is the actual ancestor of humanity. Most of the time, fossils take the name of the location where they are found. So, the Sahelanthropus chadensis was discovered in the Sahel, the desert, and chadensis is the country where we found it. Chad. Huh? So, yes, Chad. Okay. Uh, and the common name is Tumai. The skull is just here. Tumai in a Chadian local language means hopes of life. Chadian people named him life because life started there. Yeah. 
this is an actual fossil that yes. was found. To my discovered in Chad and his seven million years, the ancestor of humanity. Now starting with the oldest group, the Ardubitecus one, we have the Australopithecus one. I'm sure you've heard about Lucy. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Lucy is part of that group. She's just here. Australopithecus afarensis Dinknesh, because she was discovered in Dinknesh, Ethiopia. After that, you have the group of the Homo with the Homo rudolfensis at 2.5 million years, the Homo habilis at 2. Homo habilis is very important because he's the one who discovered fire. They started to make tools out of stone. After that, you have the first migration, Homo erectus, red arrow, blue arrow, second migration, Homo sapiens, okay. And then you have this over there, Homo sapiens sapiens. Over here, you have Lucy. She's part of the Australopithecus group, discovered in Dinklesh, Ethiopia. She is 3.2 million years, and she's the actual oldest woman discovered on Earth. Tumai is 4 million years than her, more, 4 million years more than her, but she's the oldest woman discovered on the entire Earth, and she died at 20, that was this mm -hmm. like the head of an aging. Um, she was already bipedal, she walked on two feet. Those two are part of the same group, they are Australopithecus too, and those two are Paranthropus. So they lived uh, in the same period but in different environments. The reason why they went extinct because the environment was very hostile for water. They couldn't find water or shelter, and the food was very abrasive, fine, but difficult to chew. So we could have been from them if they didn't. Uh, all die, or we could have had uh, in the humanity a species uh, who would be a mix of Australopithecus and Paranthropus. But they were vegetarian? No, they were not. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what were they trying to chew that they couldn't chew. <laughs> Maybe they could have lived if they were a vegetarian. Okay. Okay. If they were vegetarian, they would have survived. Right? Uh -huh. So this is the Homo habilis. Uh, he's the one who started to make tools out of stone, like the bifaces. The most common one is that it's a knife with two face. And he's also the one who discovered fire, but didn't harness it, didn't master it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's the following species, the Homo erectus, the one who made the first migration, uh, who um, harnessed fire and started to cook their meals. This is the skeleton of the Turkana boy. He was discovered around the Lake Turkana in Kenya. And he died at 12, but was already way taller than Lucy, who died at 20. As you can see, so started from the discovery of fire, not only the brainial capacities are increasing, literally the size of the brain are increasing, but they are growing taller and faster because they feed themselves better and they migrate in better adapted environment for their biology to develop much easier. So the other one back here, that's from Yeah. So from Tumai to here, we are still in Africa, and then they decide to migrate, and that's how we found Megalon in Spain, and the second man in Beijing, China. So the same species from Erectus or Erdacet went from Africa to Europe in Asia. And that's why we say Africa is the cradle of humanity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, on the second wave of migration with the Homo sapiens archae, this one, Homo sapiens archae, was discovered in Morocco, the Jebel Irut, and the Homo kibish was discovered in Ethiopia. And as you can see, the brain, the brain sizes are nearing ours, and proportionally, the tools are decreasing because the skills are improving. Uh, in the middle, you have the ancestor of French people, the Homo neanderthalensis, the Homme de Neanderthal, in French. He's an Homo sapiens archae, which Produced the Homo sapiens sapiens from Magnet, who is also an ancestor of French. And lastly, we have the Homo senegalensis, because he was discovered in Senegal, but not in the ground, he was discovered in a barbell tree. Mm -hmm. in a barbell tree. Yeah, inside the tree. Um, this is um, the skull of a griot. Do you know about griots? Mm -hmm. So they had kind of a conflict with cultivators. 
and they were saying that we have had life too easy. They were just talking to make a living and they didn't harvest this, the ground to make a living. So they, they didn't know how to hard work actually. So once they died, they wouldn't bury them in the ground but in a barb of tree, as if the barb of trees were connected to the ground. <laughs> they would make a hole in a barb of tree and bring their standing inside. Ironically, in Senegal, the, the soil is very dry and acidic. If you bury someone in the ground, he disappears in like six, seven years. Really? And in a barb of tree, he stays. Wow. wow. <laughs> Amazing. Question. Yeah. Was it one grill per baobab tree or they put many grill in one baobab? No, they put many person in one baobab. Okay. Yeah. That's why uh, actually in Senegal we have different reasons for burying bab uh, people in baobab trees. For the Sere people that any group who live here in Senegal, they bury important people in baobab trees, like mm -hmm. war heroes or royalty, etc. But for the Druid, it was because of that conflict. And the first president in 1960 banned that practice, so everyone is buried in the ground now. But you can still find some Baobab cemeteries in some region of Senegal, like Banja. Uh, we call them in Wolof Gui Ngewel. Gui means Baobab tree, and Ngewel means Griot. Mm. Now, this is the last piece of evolution. You! <laughs> <laughs> it's written in French, you are also in a mistaken state. So sorry from Tumai, we evolved to arrive to you. Great. Yes. Um, now once they settled it, they stopped the migration, started to live in community and creating civilization. They were looking for activities to do in group. And the most important activity still today is looking for food. Now, they were looking for a way to keep that food longer and that's how agriculture started with this kind of food. Here you have uh, the ancestors of blenders and mixers of today, <laughs> right? To grind or to crush spices or grains. Um, here you have some arrowheads for hunting over there, here and here. Those at the bottom are hooks for fishing. And the round stones with a hole in the middle are the actual ancestors of pendants, jewelry we have. For the ancestors jewelry. 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 Yes. Yeah. Very good. Now about rock art, this is the last piece of this exhibition. Rock art is just a proof that civilizations before us had activities in their daily life and also believe, uh, believes you can see through these carvings, paintings and sculptures we found in different African countries. This one for example is from Algeria, uh, 9,000 years before us and it shows a hunting session. With the hunter of the bear, this form looking like an antelope in the, the prey and do flying things are the spirits which protects the prey. So the hunter needed to be physically prepared, armed, but also kind of mystically in mm -hmm. order to pay respect to the spirit he was mm -hmm. to the, the spirit of the creation. This for example are uh, some Chadian women carved on a wall in Chad. Uh, it's from seven thousand years before us. The prettiest carvings are these two giraffes, mm -hmm. 7,000 years before us through in Niger. I believe you say Niger? Oh. Yes. Niger. Yeah, we say Niger in French. To make the comparison between Niger and Nigeria. Okay. No, we take the elevator. Yep. Last time we took the stairs. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay.
is that they don't even get up the steps at any point and got out the base. Then is yeah, I'm gonna take my grandchildren. I think that they this did. exhibition is called Continental African Civilizations, and it it's divided uh, into uh, many thematics. The first one started from where you are standing to the wall over there. It's about fertility, fecundity, maternity, and birth. So about women. The second one in the middle of the room is about royalty and the expressions of power. Just behind it, you have the funerals. The bottom left, you have agriculture and hunting. And bottom right, you have divinities and the beginning of monotheism. What's monotheism? Monotheism. Monotheism, yes. One God. Yes, the living one divinity. That arch you just went through uh, is from the mid Sogo people in Gabon and it's put in the main entrance to uh, filter basculus, so it's a protection. I need to give it a I never leave the basket. Over here you have two birds for the. I know they look like Sankofa, but they are Baga birds. Uh, for the Baga people in Conakry Guinea, and they are totem fertility. Stork. <laughs> yeah, you know, somebody told me just yesterday that it, it looks like a stork. A stork. Um, those are called Ibeji. Ibeji means queen for, uh, for the Yoruba people in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and they have celebrations for all their lives because twins represent fertility and success and power. So they are celebrated there because they are very important. Behind you, you have a structure um, from the Makonde people, the Makonde tribe in Tanzania, made with a pregnant woman body and a man head. It's a mask called Lipiko Kunumumbo. And the men of that tribe used to put that mask on to celebrate the pregnancy and the birth of the Okay. <laughs> this is a mummification made by an artist from the US, Sharon Copriva, and it's supposed to be an echography of a womb with triplets. It symbolizes life, the beginning of life. Where's the third one? In the middle. Oh, okay. It symbolizes triplets and the beginning of life. Yep. Over here we have two um, three actually three statues which have the same thematic, the same meaning. That one from the Yoruba people in Nigeria. That one from the same country, from the same people. And this one from the Bangwa people in Cameroon. Um, have the same thematic matriarchy, the natural system, and maternity. Mm -hmm. You have the queen sitting on the head of the king to show the matriarchal system. And you have uh, the queen breastfeeding the baby to show that you, um, the function of mother is as important as the function of queen. So you rule and you organize your kingdom as you rule and you organize your family. And that's why uh, the servants are represented in the same size as the baby to show that they are seen as children of the queen. So these are the servants now. Yep. Okay. Every one of them is holding something and that shows their function. Let's go over there, for example. I'll show you. Now, you have, it says that the, the woman is sitting on the head of the man, and that's for the, the man is the head of the. Now, it shows that um, it's a matriarchal system, an economical, political, social um, system, uh, which uh, in women moves in there. They take the decision, and the woman are queen. The title is passed upon a mother to daughter. And they are like the center of the society. They are the leaders. But um, most of the time, when I say the queen is sitting on the head of the king, they understand that it's to crush him or she's more important than him. But no, it's because he support him that she has that much power. So she's the foundation of it. In a matriarchal system, in ancient African civilizations, the man was the, the, the foundation of the power so the woman could step up, could have that much power. And uh, in, on the contrary, in a patriarchal system, the women were the foundation and the men were the leaders. That's how it works. Now, the, um, the concept of patriarchy that we have today, in my country, for example, come from coloni colonization. Mm -hmm. So it's the one where uh, women don't have to talk, 
um, men take the decision and they crush them by, uh, I mean, with, the, with their power. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's an imposed system of colonization that white people impose on us. So the patriarchy is an inferior system to the matriarchy? It's the contrary. It's the opposite. Oh, it's not the oh, concept. She's talking about she's talking about the current patriarch system, mm -hmm. not the yes. traditional oh, the, the, African. Oh, the, the patriarch system as exists today? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. But the traditional one shows that the man is there but the woman is the leader. No. She, that's matriarch. That's, that's, that's that, the foundation that, okay. and the Right. She created she yeah. created everything. Yeah. Birth came from her. She nurtured and fed the child uh, to become a man. The spark of life comes from the man. Huh? The spark of life comes from the man. Okay. Yeah. That's a different yeah. opinion. <laughs> I agree with you, Fitzgerald. I agree with you, Fitzgerald. I agree with Fitzgerald. Me and you are we on the same page, Fitzgerald. I agree with you, Fitzgerald. I agree with you. from the Yoruba people in Nigeria okay. and uh, you have every subject represented on with their function like the musicians, the guard, the hunters, the agriculturists and the women uh, and they were supposed to accompany the king to his last house in theory and in practice they were killed and buried with the king mm -hmm. and we got that from Egypt, ancient Egypt okay. uh, before the end of the first dynasty in ancient Egypt once a pharaoh died he would bury all his servants with mm -hmm. him because the servants were part of his belongings. Right. Actually, um, Egyptian believed in afterlife, so they wanted to bury their belongings with them to take them wherever they are going after. And servants have, the, have been unlucky enough to be part of the belongings. Yeah. Yep. They were sacrificed. Yes. Or buried alive? Buried dead. Okay. Excuse, can you tell me where the restroom is? Yes, of course. Costumes also belongs to the Malian people, the Dogon, so the Bambara, and this music instrument also belongs to them. It's called the Kora, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was created by the The one in the middle is from Benin, and that one is from Congo, the Republic Democratic of Congo. Now, they are called Toma. A, a Toma is a protector of a sector, a location. For example, did you, did you go to Gori Island? Yeah. Yeah? Um, I, I think the boat you take to go to the island is called Kumba Castel. And Kumba Castel is the street protector of Gori Island. Mm. Now, that's, that's what a Toma is. So those three are Thomas, they are guardian of the social harmony and also guardian of children in the society. <laughs> Look very material, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we move to the religion.
This execution is for African appropriation of Abrahamic religions. Mm. The appropriation which Africans made of the religions of Abraham, which came in Africa by the jihad, the religious war, the same war. So, um, basically in this group, we have the example of the three religions we have in Senegal. Judaism, most of the Jewish people in Africa live in Ethiopia. Uh, you have Islam over here, is a branch, a very a spiritual branch called the Sufism. Mm -hmm. And over there you have Christianism. And behind the wall you have uh, the Brotherhoods. So the Brotherhoods are very important for Senegalese people and they all face in the Islamic religion. Uh, we have so many of them, so we took example of four of them. Uh, because the, um, the lead of those brotherhoods are important for the religions in Senegal but also for the history. They are witness of the colonization, so they are resistant. We call them resistant, um, violent and non-violent war. So they fought against the French colonizers. What, what were the names of the brotherhoods? Is Murray to Johnny? Hadriya means the Hadr people. The followers are called the Hadr people. So the Hadriya over here, over here you have the Tijaniya. The followers are called the Tijan. Amadou is Tijani. Okay. Okay. So the Tijan here, uh, and this is their leader, Sheikh Elas Omar Al Sidiyuta. Uh, he's the one who brought the Tijaniya in Africa. And these are his shoes, and this is his saber. This museum was um, established by the four presidents of Senegal, but also in the process of restitution. Means all the artworks in the art object that colonizers um, and slave owners uh, took in Africa mm -hmm. during that time, they are started to be restituted. From France. Yes. From is the he, uh, Minister of Culture. Is he the one he saw on the back of somebody's car? No, no, no. That's that's Sheikh Amadou Bamba. I will show you the one you show, you see on everybody's car yeah. because he's very famous. Okay. Uh, Jada Jess Saren Tuba. <laughs> Jada Jess Saren Tuba. Okay, that's this man. Okay. <clears throat> His name is Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba. Ba. My last name, Ba. Mm -hmm. But uh, we call him Make because Make means saint. Okay. Saint, the good one. Mm -hmm. So the name is Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba Make. And he's called Serin Tuba. Serin means Sheikh or lead in Wolof. And Tuba is the location where he founded the Muridiya, his brotherhoods. And um, uh, the followers are called the Murid people. So Serin Tuba um, witnessed colonization. He was a pacifist, so he fought against colonization very pacifically. He was abducted by French people and they tortured him, mm. but they returned him once they realized they couldn't do anything against him. Um, he was literally kidnapped by the French governor and he was asked so many questions about why he wanted to, to create a group. Yes, those so questions. questions. Uh -huh. Those questions. questions. No. Well, yep. Because he was starting to assemble people to become his followers. Mm -hmm. But the governor, the French governor, uh, thought that he was assembling an army to fight against him. Mm -hmm. So he, they abducted him and mm -hmm. asked him so many questions. And those questions, um, what's the word again? Became, <laughs> those questions became the founder, actually, the 18th question, mm -hmm. the foundation of the Muridia. I know his face. I see it in Amsterdam. In everybody's heart. Everybody. Right. Yes. In, in the Netherlands. He's <laughs> very famous. Yeah. Yeah. Of him. Film in in his in Sheikh Amdou Bamba. Sheikh Ibrahim Mafal. Mafal. He's the his first film. 
the social media, the by far. Inside that product. So, you know, you see the men uh, wearing some the colorful clothes, clothes yeah. with the big necklaces. And they have dreadlocks, mm -hmm. they are called the bifal. It's mm -hmm. a brotherhood inside that brotherhood. Oh, okay. Created by Mafal, his first one. Oh, okay. okay. And they are the most famous one here in Senegal because they have followers in all oh, around the world. Yes, I see. they are in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they are always saying, Jurijuf Serin Tuba. Jurijuf means thank you. Yeah. Mm. So they are saying thank you, Serin Tuba, for what you've done for us. Do even you, before you knew we would exist. Do you know when Magal is this year? The Magal? Do you know when it, when it, what, what when date? It, um, they have they in this? No, okay. I think it's in... September, probably. Um, no, less than two months. Okay. Oh, really? So it might be in August? Yes. Oh, okay. I, I think so. I'll find out, because, mm -hmm. okay. I'll try to come. It, so, is this the same person? Yeah, because not oh. many people have seen him. Okay, so it was in the beginning of the 19th century. Um, and those pictures were took by French people. Uh, he was laying the first stone of the mosque of Yare. So the French people told us that they didn't have any documents or pictures about the Nukumba. And out of nowhere, they gave us six pictures oh. huh. and we bought them actually 60,000 uh, oh, yeah, French goods. Yes. 60,000? We bought them back uh -huh. to some people. Oh, so six God. pictures out of nowhere and they were saying no we don't have any documents. There must be more after that. There must yeah. be more. Yeah. Maybe it was under someone's bed, I don't know. And he uh, just oh. found it again. Here, <laughs> so it's very important for us. Actually, it's a national treasure. Yeah. And once uh, people heard that we had the pictures of Zendua, but they were invaded, they were invaded, they were invaded. Was this here? Um, when did, when did, when were these pictures put up? Um, less than a month. Yeah, because they weren't here when I was here. Yeah, yeah this wasn't here. Recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like this, cause this was weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah, because this is the only picture. Oh, yes. This really is the only picture. picture. Yeah. That's amazing. What's his name? Sheikh Amadou Bamba. the room where we keep the Biennale prices. It's a contemporary art festival which the second president of Senegal, Abdou Diouf, created. It's called Biennale, La Biennale de Dakar, the Biennale of Dakar, or Dak Art. Mm -hmm. And it happens every two years. Here in Senegal, we have a thematic link to black history. And um, the authors make artworks related to that thematic. And the prices are kept here and in the Palais of Justice. The Palais de Justice of Dakar. So he made that museum and that festival for 
Senegalese African in Black art and culture to be seen and recognized everywhere in the world. So most of these artworks have a cartel, I mean all of them. You see the cartel, you have the name of the artist, the name of the artwork, and the material uh, or the technique they mm -hmm. use to make those artworks. So some of them don't have a title, so they are free interpretation. So I'll let you look around and come to a tour. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Some nice art. Really? And um, I don't know where I was. It might have been in a museum or something. Mm -hmm. And I saw something. I said, I know this style. Uh -huh. We had a painting which we ended up auctioning for $40,000. Oh, wow. So I'm looking at the styles. Uh -huh. We never know what we have. Uh -huh. 